All right, we're here at my DIY tiny worm bin. And the last time we were in here, we attempted a second migration and you can even see it depressed over on this side. This is where we put all the food. So we'll see if the worms come over to this area. We also saw some deterioration of that burlap sack that we have in here. So we'll check on that. And then finally, because we have a strawberry festival coming up, we're gonna do a strawberry versus oats worm bin challenge, almost like a breakfast worm bin challenge. So if you're in the area between Tampa and Orlando, check out the strawberry festival. All right, so let's start digging into this side. And it has been about six days since we were in here last. And I just kind of want to check and see if the worms have migrated over here. So we're going to dig down and see if any of the feeding is still in here. And here is the avocado. And it looks like they've gotten most of it out. There are a little bit of mites in there, but we broke it apart. So I think they've gotten most of the flesh out. And now what we're seeing is just kind of the the skin shell left of it. So that's good. These shells typically last a while. I don't know if it's gonna make it through this bin. It may be in the next iteration, but let's keep going and see if the worms are over here. Now the castings feel way more moist than they have in the past. And sure enough, I think we're getting most of the worms over on this side. This is a lot more than I've seen. So I'm thinking the migration is working here. Let's keep digging out the corner. Now this bin started with about 500 worms when we started it this last time. So we're not gonna see the oodles and oodles that we see in my outdoor bin or my vermihut worm bin, but still pretty good showing right here. And I need to kind of do this fast because as I'm lifting this up and oh yeah, I feel a bunch in here. Oh, this is because it's the burlap sack. What I was gonna say is I kind of need to do it fast because these worms could go into this side and then I don't know if there's been a migration but there's obviously some food on the outside of this. And I think I'm seeing a lot more degradation, or at least I can see the individual strands of this a lot better. So let's go ahead and peek inside. We had stuffed it with lettuce, so I don't imagine we're gonna see a whole bunch, but let's go ahead and give you guys the first look. All right, I'm gonna look in here now, and really I just kind of see castings and maybe some coffee grounds, if that, but they definitely went in there and, and snacked on whatever was in there. All right, so you can see these castings are way more damp than they have been in the past, and that's because as we go from bedding to castings, the ratio is higher in castings now. Castings really retain a lot of water, so as your bins get older, they're going to retain moisture easier. All right, last little look here. I would definitely see that there is a lot of worms on this side. So I think the migration over here worked pretty well. Now I'm gonna quickly put it over here and hopefully get all the worms that were over here back on their side. So they're not kind of messing up the little experiment we had here. And let's go ahead and excavate this side right here. Now there was no food put over here last time. The best it got was, I think, pulverized oats two feedings ago, which would have been, I think, 13 days. So as I'm coming through here, I am seeing some more of the bedding. It looks like more concentration of the bedding than there was on this side. And that's because less worms over here than less degradation of the bedding because bedding is also food for them. And sure enough, I mean, I'm seeing worms, but I don't feel like I'm seeing as many as we did on this side. So if you're wondering how to get kind of your worms to one side, feed on that side. I think a lot of people knew that, but I still get questions about, you know, how do I get my worms out of my castings? And this is a pretty effective way to, you know, kind of get your worms to one area, especially in a much bigger bin. And then, you know, maybe you can harvest over on the side that they weren't. But yeah, just these castings are looking really fantastic. I mean, if you were desperate for castings because uh, you're gonna start seeds or something like that, you could actually sift some of these out and use them for your seed starter mix or to plant some plants in your garden. So, you know, you don't necessarily have to wait until your bins are completely just castings with no paper bedding at all. So good, I think what we're gonna do is we're gonna set up a couple of feeding zones. We're gonna set up a feeding zone here and then we're gonna set one up over here also. And we'll put some food in here if I can remember. So right here and right here. Let me kind of pile into the middle and I'm just gonna get this out of the way. So we'll just kind of pile up here and the center part is where I'm gonna get the bedding to bury the food that I put in. 
And what we'll do is we've been feeding food scraps on this side, so I'm going to put the strawberries over here. And previously we fed pulverized oats over here, so I'm gonna put the whole oats right here. All right, so these are rolled oats and they're whole grain. I think last time I said whole wheat, which clearly these aren't wheat, they're oats. But I did not pulverize them, so this is gonna be, you know, the whole oats right out of the package, which has been expired for four years. So we'll put that there. And these are very dry. And I'm not using any bedding because we're getting so close to harvest that I'm not going to use any more bedding. So this little dry oat area will kind of act like a little bit of bedding as far as what bedding does for, you know, moisture control. And I'm just kind of spreading it out so it doesn't get clumpy. Just kind of mix it in a little bit. And then I'm going to put coffee over there so we kind of keep things the same on both sides. And then we'll do our pulverized eggshells on this side as well. All right, so next we're gonna take strawberries and we're gonna put them over here. So we'll just put the strawberries just like that. And you may see that these are, you know, frozen or just very slightly thawed, but we had the light on so I didn't see any worms down there. And the executive producer let me know that I was about to forget this burlap sack again. So <laughs> thank you very much. We'll go ahead and put in some strawberries. And you know what I'm gonna do? I'm also gonna put in some oats. So let's go ahead and do that. In go some oats. All right, and uh, which side do we put it on? I think we'll put it right here. All right, so now we'll go in with the coffee. And in with the pulverized eggshells. All right, so we've got both our sides set up, strawberry and whole oats. And if you like this video and you appreciate the different experiments I do in here, go ahead and hit the like button and consider subscribing to my channel and hit the bell notification so you can get notified whenever I release a new video, which is about every other day. So I think this will be a good kind of experiment to see how things go. It will also help, you know, get the worms eating these individual pieces of bedding as we get closer and closer to finish castings. I don't want to get ahead of myself. It's not like we're two weeks out or even a month out, but I think six weeks is probably a good timetable. We are, I think, at 106 days right now in this bin. So it is in great shape. The moisture is very good, and I just like where it is right here. So hope everybody is having a great day, and happy vermicomposting, everybody. Take care now.